Even though both Oregon and Washington had a wet and cool winter and spring, wildfire season is just around the corner. Recently, we sat down with County Fire Marshal Dan Young to learn ways to protect your home and family from wildfires. Hello, I'm Jim Demo with Clark County Close-Up. Thank you so much for meeting with us. Thank you for having me. Now, we're recording this interview on what happens to be a beautiful day on April 27th, but prior to this week, yeah. it's been very cold, very wet. It's like the sun's never going to come out. So with this cold, wet winter, um, does that improve our fire outlook, wildfire outlook for the summer? If it stays cold and wet, yes. Um, but with the warming up and the moisture, we have a potential of uh, plants growing a lot more. So if we get a lot of growth and then we hit a very hot time, now we have more fuel load, which can actually increase the problems with the fire season. So it's a good bad thing. We have moisture, but if the moisture dries out, the plants have grown more, so you have a, a greater fuel load. So I'm not a weatherman, don't pretend to be. <laughs> um, we play it by ear as we go. But yeah, the potential for more fire fuel is, is, is there with colder, or the wetter, and then the warm right now. So you, as everybody knows, the grass is gonna grow more. You gotta mow more. That's what's gonna happen with all the fuel loads in the forest. Okay, so is, it, it, our summer and spring a good time to uh, prep your home for fire season? Yes, it is. It's, it's the perfect time. Um, you can, you're out there, it's wet, but you can grab things. Um, what we recommend is you clear off any pine boughs, that kind of stuff. Clear your land for um, any kind of combustibles. Um, you want to trim your trees, trim them up. Um, get any combustibles like under your deck, you get a bunch of stuff blowing under a deck, clean that out because that's fuel for a fire. Uh, just so maintenance of your place, you know, down branches, pick them up. Um, either um, if you're in a, the city, you put them in your yard debris. If you're actually in a burn area, follow the burn rules and you can burn them up before it gets to be a problem. And you want to keep, I've heard, defensible space yes. around your, uh, about what's... So a uh, good rule of thumb is anything within five feet, you definitely want zero combustibles. Um, I, I recommend that you take out your bark mulch and put in crushed gravel or something within five feet. Uh, out to 30 feet, you want to limb your trees up 30 feet, or 30, from 30 feet in to the five foot, trim those trees up to 15 feet. You're, 15 feet. Yeah, so. you're eliminating, okay. eliminating the, the fuel source. Um, and then, you know, maintain a good, if you have landscaping, maintain a good landscaping. Okay. Yeah. And it's never a good idea to stack firewood right next to your house. Yes, yes. No, anything combustible should be stayed away from, in, in, especially in that five feet. So if embers come and they hit that, now you have a fuel load to catch your house on fire. Okay. Now, before people start, if they, they, they decide they're going to be removing trees or shrubs um, and they live within uh, the city or next to a stream, should they be checking with anyone? Yes, they should, if, especially if you're near a stream in a wetland. Um, you know, some of those plants are there for a reason. Uh, so you definitely want to check with uh, environmental people um, like uh, our wetland habitat people. Um, if you're in the city, uh, some of the cities have rules on trees and cutting them down. Um, so if you ever have a question, just call your local authorities and they'll help you out with that. But yeah, you should always check. And, but, and again, we're, we're talking about trimming the, the branches, yes. to, not yeah. taking out yeah. trees. taking out, yes. Okay. Now, do rural homeowners that live in higher elevations, do they need to take additional steps? Well, they should take the same steps. But yes, when you're in the higher elevations of Clark County, you have a lot more of the... Uh, um, pine trees and stuff. So make sure, like we talked about, uh, keeping those clear, getting the pine um, boughs off your roof, um, cleaning out uh, gutters, cleaning out around the decks. It's, it's the same thing, just uh, you need to be a little more aware. Um, and a lot of the homes up in there have bigger lots. So maintaining at least a 30 foot clear area around your home. So you want to protect your house from the wildfire, but at the same time, you want to protect the wildland from your house. So if you actually have an issue with your house, you're not catching the wildland on fire. So it's a two-way two, two -way street. So, but you just want to make, be, be aware, uh, watering your plants, watering your grass, keep it, keep it moist, it helps. Okay. So, so what are some general ways people can uh, avoid accidentally starting a fire? So if you're in an area you're burning, please follow our rules. You can go to our website, which we'll give you at the end. Um, follow the rules with that. Like if you're having a campfire, please um, have a bucket of water or a hose, a shovel nearby, and constantly attend it. 
And then when you're going to go inside, you want to make sure it's cool to the touch. So when you run your hose on it, it's cool to your touch. Just kind of reach down and don't feel heat. I don't recommend putting your hand in it and burning yourself. Um, but you just have to be aware. So constantly attend the fire and then make sure when you put it out, you put it out to the cold to the touch. Okay. And, and th those gas propane fires uh -huh. that seem to be all the rage, they're... they're oh, yeah, those are fine. Fine. You know, yeah, just shut yeah, them off, make yeah. sure they're shut yeah, off. Yeah, so when we go into a burn van, that's typically for the burning of debris, and those are exempt from that. But just make sure that they are off. Turn off the propane, not just the off switch. Turn off the propane and the source. Okay. Uh, what are some steps that people should take now to be prepared for a possible evacuation um, due to wildfire or other emer emergency? What are some things they should consider? So I always tell people to be prepared. Um, I actually have what I call a to-go bag. Uh, in it I have uh, medicines, um, important documents like your insurance documents. So if something does happen, you have your policy. You have important papers um, that you have, copies of them or something, so that way you have them. Also having a first aid kit and water is very important because you don't know. And as you know, this year, last year, the Nakia Creek was 40,000 people had to be evacuated um, because of that. So being prepared ahead of time, having it there, um, so that way you can just grab it, have it in a location where you know it's at, so you can quickly get out. Okay, now are, are there some emergency alert services that people can sign up for in advance? You know, I know those are very helpful with yes, the, the fires. Yes, they are. So you can go to Cressa911.org and there's a, you click on it, public alerts. And so then they can send things to your phone. So especially nowadays, a lot of people do not have home, home lines. They have cell phones and then you can get those alerts. Um, but like I said, Cressa911.org, public alerts, and then register and that should be very helpful. Great. Now, you talked about evacuation levels. Can you explain kind of what are the various evacuation levels and what they mean? Yeah, so uh, basically you have levels one, two, and three. Uh, easy way to remember that is ready, set, go. So um, first level, level one, ready. You know, you have an event, some, something happening such as um, like the Nakia Creek mm -hmm. or, you know, it could be a transformer that went nearby your house, but, you know, being ready to go. That's where you go grab it and just, you know, have, get your stuff together. Hopefully you've had it in advance. Um, set is you're getting closer. Make sure it's now next to your door, that type of stuff. And go is an immediate threat. Um, so then you want to leave. You know, and you know, that's where you also have dog food in your bag for your pets or cat food. Um, medicines, is very important. So during that, you know, ready, set, go is you know, get yourself ready, get set, and then go. And then when you leave, make sure you close all windows and doors. A lot of times these embers can then a lot of people have lost their houses because they left their window open. Oh. And the embers get inside the house and then they lose their house from the inside out. Oh. So, um, you know, it's just being prepared. And then, like I said, have your ready, then the set, and then the go. So. Yeah, yeah, I would, I'm glad you mentioned pets because I know that's a lot of oh, you know, yeah. people don't think about that. Oh, they, they got to take, especially they, if they have yeah, horses they or something like yeah, that. Yeah, last year we had a problem with that. So, um, but the pets are very important. People think about them, but then they forget their food or something like that or their medicines. So. Okay. Uh, let's, let's switch gears. The 4th of July will be coming up. When can people use fireworks in Clark County for the 4th of July holiday? So for an unincorporated Clark County, and that's what I okay. do, um, other cities you can find out, but Clark County is 9 a.m. to midnight on July 4th only. Sales go from the 28th through the 4th, but you can only use them in unincorporated Clark County from 9 a.m. to midnight on the 4th. So you can go to our website, which I'll give at the end, and we have a, a map. Um, we also have um, all the cities, and but check. But like City of Vancouver, no no fireworks at, at all. all. At all. In, but a lot of people have an unincorporated. They're unincorporated, but they have a Vancouver address, but they're legal. But please check. Um, we have a map on our website that you can type in your address, and it tells you what the rules are. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so for those people who do live in unincorporated Clark County and can light off fireworks, what are some safety tips that they, they should consider? So always have an adult present, you know. Um, make sure that you have water. Um, adult supervision, do not drink and use fireworks. Um, having shovels there um, and common sense, you know. Do not point them at houses. Do them in an open area that is, you know, that you're not going to start something. So just maintain, you know, 
making sure that you're in a good area, having a source to put out a fire if it starts. And then the, the key thing is when you're done, do not put your fireworks in the garbage can next to your house. They still have heat. We get at least two or three houses burnt up from used, spent fireworks that still have heat in them. So you want to douse them. Um, I always kept them away from my house, doused them, and then the next day I would put them in the garbage. So do not just, you're done, do not put them in the garbage can next to your house. And, and as I've heard, potting soil is not a good place to put anything that's no. burnable because potting soil can catch fire. Yes, yes, so a lot of people put their cigarettes out in potting soil. So it's not a good thing. So, but like I said, with fireworks, just make sure you're keeping them away from your house when you're done and you, you hose them down. And check first on this website yep. that we're going to talk about to make sure that it's legal in your area. Yes. So where can people find all these wildfire prevention tips and the fireworks information? So um, you can always call um, our office um, or our website. And our website is www.clark.wa.gov slash community development slash fire prevention. And we have a lot of tips on there. Or they can call our office, 564-397-2186. Um, and any one of my deputies or inspectors can help. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for meeting with us. I'm hoping it is a calm summer for us. I, that's what we hope for, too. But if you have questions, please contact us. And we were, that is our job. We're here to help. Great. Thank you. Thank you.